Okay, now our next step is to uh, prepare the code that we need. We need two kind of codes. We need the code that uh, will insert the data inside the SQL uh, that's called the store procedure. We're going to use the store, store procedure approach. That's one of the ways to do that. And we need also the C-sharp code. We're going to start with the store procedure code uh, that will insert data inside the employee table. So let's go ahead and show you how we could do that. We go to our database, uh, you, as you see here, and uh, one of the options available is called the store procedures. You right click on this and say add a new store procedure. It's going to open uh, for you the default template uh, for uh, creating a store procedure. I already have created the code for that. I'm just going to name this as an insert employee store procedure. And remember that this is a store procedure that will be stored inside your database. Uh, here you define the parameters you're going to pass as an input or output. And here you define the SQL action you want to perform. So I already have defined this. I'm just going to basically paste that. Uh, what we see here, uh, let me just make sure we see that uh, correctly. We do have the parameters that we will need to insert data inside an employee database, employee table. As you could see, this is a traditional SQL command. We have insert into employee and we do have the names of the columns we're going to be inserting. Notice that the ID is not there because ID is an auto-generated field, so we're not putting that. If it's not an auto-generated field, you need to put that uh, here. Uh, it's, it is, this is not the case. It's an auto-generated field, so we exclude that, and uh, we'll come back to it as you will see here. So we list the fields and then we list the values. What values are we putting? Then we list the values. What values are we putting in here? We're not putting a static values. We are actually putting values that will be passed to this store procedure as a parameter. So as you see, those are the parameters that we have in here. Uh, the ID parameter, uh, the first parameter, the last parameter, they are preceded by the at sign. So this makes them... Uh, not column names, but they will be parameters will be passed, and we will show you how we could use that. There is one thing to pay attention into here, is, which is the, the ID field. The ID field is set as an output, and that's because the ID is an auto-generated field, and the value we of the ID we will obtain automatically from the server, the database server, each time we do perform the insert. And we obtain that by putting this line. That by putting this line, this line allows us to obtain whatever automatically generated identity stored back into the ID column. And since it's of type output, then it will be returned back to whoever uh, or whatever program uses or invokes uh, that specific store procedure. So let me save that. And uh, now we switch back to our. Uh, uh, our SQL, uh, sorry, our C sharp page. If you remember, we were at this specific step. We needed to start now working on the C sharp code. And uh, there is, uh, I already have a page ready. I'm just going to grab some of the code that's in there to save time. Uh, the first thing to pay attention to is that the built in classes that we use in the C sharp, some of them have to be. Uh, there already. I have a, a set of built-in classes that I use all the time each time I connect to database. Pay attention to that we use the web configuration along with the uh, the data that SQL client to be able to perform SQL client connections. So going back to our page, this default uh, set of uh, classes, we don't need it. We're going to use the, the new set of classes that will allow me to perform insert as, as I want. The, the second thing is we need to type the code in here that will allow me to use the store procedure that I just showed you. And uh, I was just going back to here. Let's uh, grab this code and basically alter this code to our, our page. Let's see how we can do that. So that's basically uh, the code that we're going to put inside our insert employee. I'm, I'm just going to go over it step by step, of course. You want to make sure you add, uh, you don't add extra parentheses, so, and you do check that by minimizing the methods uh, bodies. As you could see, 
the this is the class for this page it has this beginning parenthesis and end parenthesis the same thing applies to every method we have two methods one come by default the page load and this is the one that belongs to the button that we are to attach uh, the the code to so let's uh, see what it kind of code we have and what exactly uh, we we need to do for for that specific code to make it work and insert data inside our database the first thing we need to define a variable of type connection string and that variable will basically be able to grab the the connection the string to the database from our web configuration file uh, the web, web configuration file is in here if I go to uh, uh, solution explorer I would see one of the files is called web.config and each time we click on it if you go all the way to to the bottom this is actually the connection string we're using you want to make sure that this connection string points at your database server here like if uh, this is my computer name in many cases you want to replace that maybe by the SQL uh, server name that you have the default that works most of the time is localhost backward slash SQL Express but again you need to check and also this is the name of the database it connects to so if you have a different database name make sure you put that that name but it's pretty straightforward by the way this connection string can be created if you uh, drag and drop a table from the database into any one of the pages it will automatically add a connection string and then you could just keep using that connection string over and over and actually this is the easiest way to establish connection to a database now <clears throat> just going back to our uh, example so that's what what this is I'm grabbing that connection string from our web configuration file and, and I'm storing its value in this in this variable this is a perfect way of dealing with the database connection string because I don't have to keep doing it over and over and over I, I just define it once in the web config file and I keep reusing and if I have to change it later I just go to that web config file this is pretty good uh, reusability concept I don't have to uh, repeat myself in, in many places so that's the first step second step we have two parameters defined one called CON for connection and one CMD for command and those will be used one to establish connection to the database using that connection string and one to perform a specific command uh, the command that we just created if we uh, remember from our store procedure we called it insert employee so I'm going to change that uh, from the example that I had to uh, to the new one it's insert employee and that command is of type store procedure so that's how we establish our configuration first now our job is to go ahead and create parameter one for every uh, parameter we have in the store procedure if you remember we have 10 total only one of them is of type output so we're going to have to have 10 parameters created don't forget to pay big attention to the data type to make sure all all is good so uh, let me prepare those 10 parameters and we will go over them in a pretty quick 